This is Valley News Live at noon. Good afternoon, I'm Jillian Trudeau. We start, the, we start with new information on an investigation we've been following since last winter. A former Fargo Public Schools employee was arrested more than eight months after school officials and police opened up an investigation. A warrant was out for the arrest of Ruthie Carlson after charges were filed last month. Carlson was arrested and faces five felonies, including gross sexual imposition, promoting a sexual performance by a minor, possession of prohibited material, child neglect, and possession of drugs. Officials confirm that some of the charges stem from her time as a lunch supervisor at Ben Franklin Middle School, from which she was fired due to inappropriate conduct with a student. Police are searching for a man who robbed a Moorhead liquor store at gunpoint. It happened last night around 8 at the bottle shop along 1st Avenue North. Police say the man went into the liquor store and showed the gun and demanded money. That man got off with some money and left on a bike. The suspect is described as skinny man, about 5 feet 8 inches tall. He was wearing dark pants, gray hooded sweatshirt, and a black medical mask. The bike is blue or silver. If you have information on this, call the police. Three North Dakota oil rig workers are being treated at a Twin Cities burn center after an explosion and fire in Montreal County. Cord Energy Company says all three of employees are in stable condition. The blast happened Friday night at an oil well site near the town of Ross, and it took about four hours to put out the flames. The well was being serviced at the time. The oil well owner and number of regulatory agencies are investigating the cause of the explosion. A Minnesota couple is among 10 people presumed dead after the float plane they were in crashed violently near Seattle. The U.S. Coast Guard says Luke and Rebecca Ludwig of Excelsior were in the group flying from the San Juan Islands to Renton Municipal Airport when the plane crashed about 30 miles northwest of Seattle. The Minnetonka Girls Softball Association confirms Luke was a former assistant coach for many years and was also working as an engineer for a real estate te technology company. A witness to the crash described seeing the plane descending rapidly and nosediving straight into Puget Sound. So far, only one body has been recovered. Well, another warm and hazy day across the valley. Let's check in with meteorologist Jim Gash. Thanks, Jillian. Right now, we're looking at our home of economy camera up in Devil's Lake. And there are no clouds out there. And there's a slight wiggle in the camera thanks to some windy days up there. And... There's a bit of a haze, not as much as was in the picture yesterday, but today there's still quite a bit of haze up in the upper reaches of our atmosphere here in the valley. Temperatures across the region are in the 70s. Rose uh, Oaks, sorry, just passed the 80 degree mark, 81 degrees there a couple minutes ago is at 79, 77 and Grand Forks, Fargo here at 76 degrees. The sky conditions are clear for most everyone. There are some of these green speckles here and there, but those are caused by some uh, dust that's kicked up as the harvest continues on through this early fall days. Uh, as we look forward into the afternoon, temperatures will continue to increase until we get to about 4 p.m. with temperatures there in the low 80s. And of course, those skies will remain sunny. I'll let you know how long you can expect those skies to remain sunny coming up next. All right, thanks, Jim. Jury selection continues today in the trial of a man accused of stabbing a 14-year-old Fargo girl to death last year. 24-year-old Arthur Coley is charged with murder, robbery, and aggravated assault. He's accused in the death of Jupiter Paulson near the party city in South Fargo. Once underway, the trial is scheduled to last four days. If convicted, Coley could face life in prison. The suspect in the kidnapping and killing of a Memphis woman made a court appearance today to face more charges, including first-degree murder. Memphis police say they found Eliza Fletcher's body four days after she was abducted during an early morning jog. As Elise Preston explains, some critics say the suspect, a convicted kidnapper, should have still been in prison. Police discovered the body of Eliza Fletcher Monday in a grassy lot behind a vacant duplex, roughly seven miles from where the kindergarten teacher and mother of two was last seen. 
According to an affidavit, tire tracks and an odor of decay led officers to the gruesome discovery. Also recovered, a trash bag containing purple shorts, like the ones Fletcher was last seen wearing. While the outcome of this investigation is not what we hoped for, we are nonetheless pleased to remove this dangerous predator off the streets of Memphis. You're charged with especially aggravated kidnapping. Investigators say 38-year-old Cleotha Abstin violently forced Fletcher into his SUV while she was out jogging at about 4 a.m. last Friday. Fletcher's cell phone was found nearby, along with a pair of sandals that had traces of the suspect's DNA. Abstin previously kidnapped a prominent Memphis attorney when he was 16 years old. Abstin served nearly 20 years in prison for that crime, but had been sentenced to 24. Charlie Caswell is a Shelby County Commissioner. You have fought against recidivism here in Memphis for for a very long time. Did the system fail in, in this situation? I don't know all the details on it, but it looked that way very much so. But Shelby County District Attorney Steve Mulroy noted Abstin served 85% of his sentence. I think it's easy to take one particular case and uh, try to extrapolate from that. I think what we just need to do right now is just focus on going forward and making sure that justice is done in this particular case. Elise Preston, CBS News, Memphis, Tennessee. The district attorney says he has no reason to think Fletcher was targeted, instead calling this an isolated attack by a stranger. In a statement, Fletcher's family said they are heartbroken and devastated by this senseless loss. It's crowded bus rides and longer wait times at bus stops this year in the West Fargo area. The school district's business manager says it's because they have 10 fewer bus drivers this year compared to last. He adds that buses are at capacity and may be a little uncomfortable for the time being and encourages parents to talk to their kids about being respectful on school buses. Some Grand Fork schools can't seem to beat the heat this week. Lewis and Clark, Nathan Twining, Valley, Viking and Wilder schools shut down yesterday because of high temps and will do so again today and tomorrow. Students were just dismissed at noon and all elementary and middle school athletic activities are canceled. High schools are operating as usual. Well, coming up at noon, spending a little more green to help the environment. We'll show you a new product, Minnesota Road crews are testing out. But next, whether to plan your day.